get into some Lakers news and rumors here. Damian Jones has signed a 10-day contract with L.A. Played 14 games with Phoenix earlier this year before getting cut loose. Obviously, the Lakers need front court help, but this is more of a short-term addition for Los Angeles. This is not the, oh, Anthony Davis is out, Damian Jones will fill the void. That's obviously not what's happening here, but you need some guys that can eat up some minutes, can give you some depth, and Jones can do that. We'll see if he proves himself enough to earn a spot on the roster long term. I'm not convinced that happens. Davis remains out with that calf strain there. Obviously, you're not going to replace his 22 and a half points with anybody, much less Damian Jones. Need Montrez Harrell to pick it up. Markeith Morris, Mark Gasol, they kind of are what they are at this point. But the point is, this front court has been thin. And again, Damian Jones is not a guy that's going to save your front court or save your roster by any means. But can he give you 10 minutes off the bench? Can he give some of those guys a blow when needed? Yeah, he's been around for a few years now. He's someone who can come in, give you some energy, play a little bit of defense, grab some boards, and at least eat up some minutes. So that is the first news when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, Manscaped is the sponsor of today's show, and for good reason, because they're going to change your life. I was going to say save your life, maybe a bit extreme, but they will change your life because it gets gnarly downstairs. Manscaped will fix that for you guys. Lawnmower 3.0 is the best men's grooming product out there. 20% off and free shipping off this product and all of their products at Manscaped when you go to manscaped.com slash chat. Get the lawnmower 3.0, shave downstairs, no tug, no pull, no razor burn, and you might get a little tug later. It's a great deal. Manscaped.com slash chat. Get 20% off plus free shipping at checkout when you go to that link. All right, let's not get confused and say, oh, the Lakers, their roster's set because they've signed Damian Jones. No, it's very possible they still add a player. It just may be after the All-Star break at this point, which is coming very soon. Latest reports, Lakers continue to monitor the trade and buyout market. Like I said, Jones, he's not a long-term answer. Maybe he earns a spot on the roster, but he's a 14th, 15th guy on the end of the bench type of guy, plays plays on load management times. That is, uh, that is Damian Jones. Lakers still need help in their front court. Let's not get it twisted. These are some names that continue to be out there. Andre Drummond, obviously. Him and Blake Griffin for the Cavs and Pistons, they're not playing right now. They're sitting as those teams explore a trade. Uh, the Lakers probably can't trade for either of these two guys because of money, but if they get buy out or bought out by their respective teams, I would say those are prime candidates. P.J. Tucker's a name that's been connected to the Lakers. He's out there. The Rockets are likely going to be sellers. Hassan Whiteside uh, with the Kings. He hasn't been playing for them. He's a buyout candidate. And then JaVale McGee with the Cleveland Cavaliers, obviously a former Laker there. He could be an option as well if he does get bought out. Current free agents, there are guys out there. DeMarcus Cousins, we'll continue to mention him. The report, reports are that there isn't going to be a reunion there. I don't really get that. I would at least kick the tires on Cousins, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Dwayne Dedman, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, you know, maybe they're, they're kind of more in the Damian Jones category. A little bit better than Jones, but maybe not the long-term solutions you're looking for to get some depth in that front court. I absolutely believe the Lakers will still continue to scour the market, see what's available via trade and or buyout. Obviously, March 25th is the uh, trade deadline, so you probably won't see any of these guys get bought out until then. Uh, but if they are before then, expect the Lakers to pounce as soon as possible. Name a player that the Lakers should add. I want to hear it from you guys in the comments section. Name someone LA should add for this playoff push. It can be a trade. It can be a buyout guy. Whatever it is, let me know who you want the purple and gold to add for the second half of the season. Should the Lakers fans be worried? Is it time to worry about what's going on with the Lakers? Losers of four straight, one and five since Anthony Davis was uh, most recently sidelined with that strained calf there. And they fall into third place in the West, and the distance between them and the Utah Jazz continues to grow in the Western Conference. I'll just say this. It is not panic time in L.A., but I think we at least have to acknowledge this team isn't going to get to where it wants to go without Anthony Davis. It, we saw it the year before they traded for Davis. Remember when LeBron came over? Oh, man, Lakers are going to win the West and make a run. They were eight games below 500 and missed the playoffs. Now, they're not going to be that bad. That team had a lot of injuries, some chemistry issues. This is still a top-four team in the West without AD. 
but it's probably not a title contending team. This recent stretch, you know, the Jazz are really good. The, the Nets are really good. Heat are playing better. Wizards are as well. I'm not going to overreact to a four-game losing streak. It's way too early to panic. But I will say again, this team needs Anthony Davis. That's why I've said all along, you wait as long as it takes for him to get 100%. The last thing you want to do, rush him back when he's 85%, and then he misses three more weeks, which is kind of what happened this last time when they decided to bring him back. Don't panic. Take your time. Obviously, the Lakers need to uh, string together some wins here. You don't want to fall into fourth, fifth, sixth place in the Western Conference, but we have not entered that territory. A much-needed All-Star break is vastly approaching for the Los Angeles Lakers, so we have not entered panic time, but it's something to monitor while Anthony Davis continues to be out. I want to hear from you guys. How worried are you about the Lakers? Scale it from 1 to 10. One being, you're not worried at all. This team's going to win the title again. It's destiny. Ten being, ah, it's panic time, and uh, this team might be like the sixth seed in the Western Conference or something like that. I want to hear from you guys. Scale from one to ten. Ten being, you're panicked. One being, no big deal whatsoever. Uh, Janzel says zero. Really not worried at all. Jason says seven. Six towards six. Uh, CJ says five. I see a one in there. I'm like a four. I'm definitely not super worried. I'm not panicked, but we at least have to acknowledge that this team is flawed, especially when Anthony Davis is not on the basketball court. And you look at the standings. Look, that gap is getting wider between the Jazz and Lakers. Let's remember, though, LeBron James teams don't need to be the top seed, especially in a year where there's basically no fans, right? Like, who cares if you're the two, the four, or even the five or six seed? I don't think they're going to fall that far. I still think they'll be top four here, but... Uh, the chances of getting like the number one seed, for example, are slipping. But again, I would not worry about that. You look five through eight. Obviously, it's a competitive Western Conference. You don't want to slip too much because you don't want a tougher first round matchup than you can have. Like, like if the Lakers played the Warriors in the first round, they would crush the Warriors. Like <laughs> the Golden State just doesn't have the ammunition. Even the Spurs right now, they would play the Spurs. That's a sweep. Like, the Spurs are overachieving in a major, major way. So, you stick at two, three, or four, I think LA is going to be just fine. But let's see how this team plays over the next few games leading up to the NBA All Star break. And then, obviously, get five, six days off, get refreshed, make a push for the second half. And then, hopefully, Anthony Davis is back, you know, late March, early April and can make that final push. You got the Blazers. Uh, you got the Wizards at the typo on my part, the Suns and the Kings before the All-Star break, and the Lakers uh, will get some time off, and it'll be just fine. How many of those games will the Lakers win, by the way? Four more to go. Remember, losers of five of six, including four straight. Can you get to two and two, get to the break, winning two of your next four? I think you're feeling good if that happens. You can hit the reset button, uh, enjoy the All-Star game, and then make that second half push as you try to win a championship. So answer this question. How many games will the Lakers win before the All-Star break?